Back when my Discord community originally started growing, I started looking around for bots to help me manage the server a little better. I tried all the usual ones, but I could never find one that did all the things I needed and wanted. So by the end of it, I had like three bots on the same server and there were still things I wanted that none of them seemed to be able to do or to do the way I wanted them. So eventually, I got tired of having to juggle a bunch of different dashboards for the different bots and, as with many other things in my life, I said, screw it, I'll do it myself. I had absolutely zero knowledge of how to make a bot for Discord and zero knowledge of JavaScript. But armed with YouTube and DuckDuckGo, I ended up creating the first version of Candy Floof, my Discord bot, in January. It wasn't a lot, but it was working. And after months of revisions and upgrades, I am now at version 6.5.5. So I decided maybe it was a good time to make a video to show it off. Since I keep talking about it, but I think a lot of people wonder what the heck this bot even does. Where do I even begin? Obviously, this bot does a lot of the basic stuff you would expect. It has a handful of commands to get information about myself or the bot, or just do funny stuff. It also manages people's roles through reactions to specific messages. These embeds and reactions are editable, so I can always add or remove more options for any of them without breaking anything. It also keeps track of users who join and leave the server, and it randomizes its current status every now and then from a list of predetermined statuses. I can also use commands to set the status to whatever I want, randomize it at any point, or add new statuses to the list on the fly. It also has some easter eggs which are most of the reactions to certain phrases and I won't really go into them in this video. But all of that is the boring stuff, the stuff you would expect from any bot. So what's so special about Candy Floof? At least for me. First of all, Candyfluff is hosted locally on this Libre computer board. The board is running Debian and is set to start up Candyfluff automatically whenever it powers on. Which means I don't have to rely on third party providers to keep it running. And there is zero delay whenever I need to do anything. And the bot's console outputs to this old tablet here. Which means I can always check what's going on by looking up while I'm on my desk. And also looks cool as heck. It also means it's always running without my main computer needing to be on. This alone is a pretty big plus for me. But I guess you want to hear about the actual things the bot can do, so let's get into it. One thing that enables most of Candy Flu's cool features is that she has an HTTP server and a UDP listener. Which means she can host websites and receive send requests and responses and listen for UDP messages, which gives her tons of connectivity with pretty much anything I want. At the moment, I use this connectivity to link Candyfluff to my stream bot for both Twitch and YouTube through StreamerBot and also to link it to TouchPortal. Candyfluff will display the URL and ports for these servers on both the terminal and a Discord embed when it starts up. Now, the first thing I used that HTTP server for was one of the things I really wanted from other bots. The ability to send notifications whenever my stream goes live. And you might say, but Emma, other bots can also send stream notifications. And you know what? You would be 100% correct. However, there's always an annoying delay in those because they're checking the streaming platform's API and the notifications themselves are not very customizable. And I don't really like the way any of them look. With Candy Floof, I made it so I can customize notifications to make them look and say whatever I want, and also have some preset ones for the games I play the most. And since it has an HTTP server, I can just send a request from either Touch Portal, StreamerBot, Stream Deck, or OVS's Advanced Scene Switcher, or anything else capable of sending HTTP requests to make the bot post a notification, which means I can make it happen at the exact time I go live with zero delays. It also means I can send notification regardless of what platform I'm streaming on, and the links and buttons will direct you to the appropriate website. All of the needed information for the embeds is stored in a handy JSON file that I can edit on the fly at any time to make the notifications say and look any way I want. This same JSON file also contains other information about whatever game I am streaming and whatever the Twitter notification should say whenever I go live for any given game. I can retrieve all of this information through specific endpoints on the HTTP server, and I can use that to power custom commands for my stream and of course to automatically send going live notifications to Twitter with the appropriate information on them. Originally, I used to edit the JSON file manually on a text editor, but that was really annoying and time consuming. So then I made commands that let me edit it on Discord through the bot itself. 
And now I've made a website hosted on CandyFlu server that lets me edit and preview any of the notifications in a very convenient way. The thing about this that I am the most proud of is that when I edit the information for the Little Hoops tournament, when I update the tournament number on the title, it will automatically detect that and also update it on the tweet and vice versa without altering anything else. It took me a while to get it to work properly, but it works great now. The website also lets me create embeds for other announcements and post them just by pressing this button here. I also plan on expanding the website to allow me to control and edit other aspects of the bot in a more convenient way in the future. A fan favorite feature of CandyFloof is the gacha system. What this does is give whoever uses the command a random item with a random rarity. Simple enough. The way it works is it first rolls to decide the rarity of the item, which can be generic, common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. Higher rarities have lower chances, and the two lowest rarities get no extra modifiers. It then reads two text files, one for nouns and one for modifiers, and picks a random line from each to create the resulting item which then gets posted as a little embed with a little bit of color to signify the rarity of the item. I can also add new nouns and modifiers to the list on the fly by using commands. I don't really use stream elements or streamlabs for my stream alerts anymore. CandyFloof handles that for me now by listening to streamer bot events and rendering them on my own custom made alert website running on the bot server. Remember kids making memes is fun, but focus on training and your TFH homework. Deer fact. Male reindeer shed their antlers in early December, while females keep theirs all year. CandyFloof hosts a couple of SQL databases that I use for several things. The most relevant ones are the ones that keep track of my Super Animal Royale stats and the one that CandyFloof uses to run my custom prediction system for YouTube streams these glasses anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a whole group with him with the King Tiger thing. Twitch has its own built-in prediction system, but when I switched to YouTube, I had to code my own, and a big part of what makes the custom system work is CandyFloof's databases. CandyFloof is programmed to react and respond to certain messages in the Discord chat, but I also have three commands that allow me to make her say anything I want, either as a standalone message or as a reply or reaction to someone else's message, which is always fun. CandyFloof also has a handy convert command, which lets you convert between metric and imperial for temperature, length, and weight, which is very handy when your community has people from all over the world. Someone suggested that we should have a channel where people are only allowed to post once per day. And the best way I could think of accomplishing that was making a channel where people with a specific role are not allowed to post. Then have CandyFloof give the role to anyone who sends a message there. And then at midnight, copy the permissions of that role into a new one and delete the old one. In the server, we have a counting channel and CandyFloof We'll keep track of the count and participate every now and then with the appropriate number. CandyFloof can access StreamerBot's quote database and post quotes from it from my Discord as well, which is not a groundbreaking feature, but it does help make my different platforms feel more unified. It also detects when people end up in the AFK voice channel, which in my server is called the Sleepy Time Junction, and gives them the Sleepy Boy role. Oh yeah, and it sends this funny gift to the main channel when it comes online. I think that's all I can think of that Candy Fluff does for now. Maybe I missed something, but it's probably something really minor. I'm also sure I'll be adding more stuff in the future if I get any ideas. Regardless, I'm pretty proud of Candy Fluff, considering I knew absolutely nothing about JavaScript when I decided I was gonna make her. And what I've learned has also helped me write scripts for other things, like my own streamer bot plugin for Touch Portal, stuff for websites, and some other random scripts I've made. But that's gonna be it for now. Let me know what you think of Candy Fluff in the comments, and thanks for watching. <laughs>